Hello. In this video, we are going to demonstrate a proof of the variational theorem in a specific case. And in the next video, we're going to give a general proof for the variational theorem. In short, the variational theorem tells us that if we know what the true ground state is of a particular system of its energy, that if we try to form some function and then take its expectation value, the expectation value we get at best will be equal to the ground state or it will be greater than it. So this expectation value of the energy will be greater than or equal to the ground state, the true ground state energy. So let's start off with some basics. Let's assume that we're talking about the Hamiltonian operator and that it operates on an eigenfunction psi sub zero with an eigenvalue e sub zero. This is simply telling us that uh, psi sub zero is an eigenfunction with an eigenvalue e sub zero. And we're also uh, insisting that e sub zero is actually the true ground state of the system. Let's also assume that we have other eigenfunctions of the same operator. So let's assume that if we have psi one, that its eigenvalue is going to be E1. And if we have psi two, it has the eigenvalue of E2. Okay. Now, since E sub zero is the ground state, we can always arrange our eigenvalues in such a way that E1 is greater than E0 and E2 is greater than E1. And the reason why this is a specific example is we're limiting our discussion to having simply three eigenfunctions with the three corresponding eigenvalues. Now, we also know that we can write any function we like, any function we like, as a linear combination of the eigenfunctions of an operator. So for example, we can write some general function f as c sub zero times psi sub zero plus c sub one times psi sub one plus c sub two psi sub two. The reason we can do this is that the eigenfunctions of an operator form a complete set. We can also think of it as they form a basis in Hilbert space. So we can write any uh, function we like as a linear combination with the appropriate coefficients c0, c1, and c2. We also know that if we form the expectation value of this particular function, we'll call that expectation value e, that the expectation value can be calculated as c sub zero squared, and then we take the eigenvalue that goes with this eigenfunction, and that's e sub zero, plus c1 squared times e1, because e1 is the eigenvalue that goes with psi one, and then c2 squared times the e sub two, because e sub two is the eigenvalue that goes with that particular eigenfunction. So now what we need to prove is, is that this particular expression here is greater than or equal to e sub zero. The next step is very non-intuitive and may seem very strange at first, but it's something that is clearly true that e sub zero is greater than or equal to e sub zero. We know this has to be true because we know that e sub zero is equal to e sub zero. So it must definitely also be true that e sub zero is greater than or equal to e sub zero. The trick now is to multiply each side of this inequality by c sub zero squared. So that gives us c sub zero squared e sub zero is less than or equal to c sub zero squared e sub zero. This is legitimate because since uh, c sub zero squared is a non-negative real number, it doesn't change the direction of the inequality. What is our next step? Well, since we know that e sub one is greater than e sub zero, 
we can use that fact right here. So e sub 1 is greater than e sub 0. And now we multiply each side of this inequality by c sub 1 squared. So we get c sub 1 squared times e sub 0 is less than or equal to c sub 1 squared e sub 1. So we simply take each side of the inequality here and multiplied it by c sub 1 squared. Since c sub 1 squared is a non-negative number, it doesn't change the order of the inequality. So what do we do next? Well, I, now we use the fact that e sub 2 is greater than e sub 0. E sub 2. And now we're going to multiply each side of the inequality by c sub 2 squared. So we have c sub 2 squared times e sub 0 is less than or equal to c sub 2 squared e sub 2. Okay. Now it may not be clear where we're going with these three inequalities. But what we can do is we can actually add these inequalities all together. So what do we get if we do that? Well on the left hand side notice that we have c sub 0 squared times e sub 0 c sub 1 squared times e sub 0 plus c sub 2 squared times e sub 0. So if we add all these together, we get c sub 0 squared plus c sub 1 squared plus c sub 2 squared, all multiplied by e sub 0. So that's simply what we get from the left-hand side, and we factor out the e sub 0. Now let's add together the right-hand sides of the inequalities. So I'm going to get c sub 0 squared times e sub 0 plus c sub 1 squared times e sub 1 plus c sub 2 squared times e sub 2. Okay. Now that we've done that, you notice something about c sub 0 squared plus c sub 1 squared plus c sub 2 squared. So long as we've selected normalized eigenfunctions, these, the sums of the squares of the coefficients add up to 1. So that gives us the left-hand side is simply being e sub 0. On the right-hand side, we notice that c sub 0 squared plus e sub 0 total expression is simply the expectation value of e. So we can substitute that into our expression, and we see that the expectation value of e is greater than or equal to the true ground state energy e sub 0, and this is the, exactly the result that we were trying to prove. So this proves the variational theorem true, so long as we assume that we're writing a function with three and only three eigenfunctions. In the next video that we look at, we're going to prove the variational theorem for any number of eigenfunctions. I thank you very much for your attention. Have a good one.